Okay, we'll get going then. Hi, um, so thank you for joining us today on this webinar around CCH iFirm, our new cloud accounting software. My name's uh, Mohamed or Mo. I work in the product management team. And today, um, um, so I work, currently work in the product management team and I'm um, focusing on the tax and accounting side of the business at the moment. But uh, I have experience uh, for 15 years in the industry and I've also worked in various other pieces of software. Um, I've also worked in product uh, leadership mm -hmm. roles with MarTech and property tech firms as well. So for today, what we'll be doing is we'll be going through uh, our product roadmaps and then I'll be passing on to our colleagues to kind of talk you through some of these products by either showing demos or some slides with some key information on the various things. So to kick off, we'll go into the roadmap. So if we start off with our tax suite um, roadmap, before we go, uh, go into what we're going to be delivering over the next few years, I'd like to go through um, the three different phases that we have. So we have a beta phase. Um, and then we have a soft launch and a commercial launch. And what we mean by beta phase is we give access to a control group of customers to test functionality based on certain scenarios that we want them to run uh, in their live settings. And it helps to make sure that our product is tested robustly before we kind of launch it to market. We then move into soft launch where we are actively selling and using the product uh, with a small subset of customers. And this enables us to test our back office billing systems, also test um, support teams uh, and also the product in a live environment with a, a bit of traffic. And then we move on to a commercial launch where the product is available for everybody to use. So the, the, they're the three kind of phases that we have on our roadmaps. So if I start off with um, tax, our personal tax product, we have a initial launch coming up um, very soon. Um, so we're actually in beta phase. So we have SA100 for small firms coming. So the SA100, we've got a we split it up into small firms, medium firms, and large firms. So for small firms, which we're focusing on um, for this end of this year, it will have an initial focus on any, anything that's required from a forms, tax forms perspective for about 95% of firms, for the small size firms. We then move on to medium size uh, firms functionality, and that includes more complex forms, such as CGT supplementary forms, foreign and capital gains, as, as an example, and that's going to be available early next year, uh, in the first half of next year. And then for the larger firms, they'll be in the second half of next year, which will have more sort of niche forms, such as MPs and laws and various other things. Uh, in addition to that, we'll have partnerships, which will be doing soft launch and commercial launch from next year in 2025. And we've also got trust tax coming end of um, 2025 and then expat in 2026. So all of these um, products um, and formats, the, uh, we can rejig them and um, change them around based on customer feedback. Uh, but once we get these products out in market, we'll see what, what customers are saying. And if this is, if this is kind of the way they want uh, to deliver, we'll go through this. But we may flex with some of that. We also have CGT and dividend scheduling standalone product coming, and that's penciled in for 2026 at the moment. MTD for ITSA is something that we have been working on here and the team's been working on. And we're looking to um, um, partake in a private beta with a small subset of customers at the back end of this year. Um, and then we'll then move into full beta next year for anybody that wants to join and be part of the HMRC transitional beta. But again, this is all based on what happens with the current government and if they want to carry on with this. Um, so at the moment, we're carrying on with the work, but if, if we hear otherwise, we, we can kind of uh, flex on dates there. And finally, I want to talk for our corporation tax and the initial beta release uh, is penciled in for 2025 uh, at, the, at the back end. And this will target initially uh, FRS 105 companies and will then update um, the product incrementally so that it gets the same level of functionality and more um, that we have currently on on-premise and it'll help you manage all the existing clients and more going forward. Moving on then to the accounts production roadmap. So what we'll do here is we're going to start off with the simplest master pack is what we've done. And the reason we did that is we wanted to build the foundations that is then going to help us sp uh, speed up delivery for more complex formats in the future. So we're starting off with the un un unincorporated master pack. Um, and that's going to also align with the cloud personal tax um, timeline. So there'll be a full end-to-end -end suite available. And then we'll then move on to the FRS 105 
uh, muster pack next uh, in early 2025, and that will then um, support uh, and work in line with the corporation tax launch that we have as well. FRS 105 will also include some more automation, such as drawing down director names, registered offices, and standing data from companies' house as well. So we're looking into not just building what we have on premise, but we're looking to kind of build more automation and enhancements. And then we'll move on to more further formats like IFRS, academies and groups in late 2026. Within the audit space, we have cloud work papers, and this is gonna uh, be coming, uh, this is currently in beta, and then we'll have soft launch later this year, and then full commercial launch early next year. And this is, includes non-audit content and comprehensive checklists using the same providers that we currently have on premise. For Validate, um, this is our bank confirmations product. Uh, again, this is in beta at the moment, and Mark is going to show you a demo of this later on today. Uh, but we're using open banking um, um, to kind of do bank confirmations, and we're looking to include all UK banks at launch, and then we can also add in European banks in the future if there's a need. Validate also uses blockchain to store data, uh, so it's more uh, secure than conventional uh, methods. And finally, we have Cloud Audit, which we're looking to kind of put into beta early next year. Uh, and this is going to be the equivalent of our, of our on-premise product. So there'll be more plans around what this looks like if you want to be part of beta programs. And then finally, moving on to our practice tool side of our product portfolio. So when we bring in all these products into our cloud um, platform, we're going to need some sort of way of managing the tasks, doing some sort of job stage tracking. So we'll have this available at the end of this year, and this is going to complement uh, our compliance product. So by having put this task management integrated into our personal tax and our accounts production products, you'll be able to manage end-to-end -end the job stage tracking for any client. This will be a simple out-of-the-box solution initially, and then we'll kind of add more functionality as we kind of move forward with more products in the range. Contact management is also being worked on and will be available end of this year, early next year. And with our API-first mentality of building products, this will mean that we're able to sync with CCH Central. So uh, whenever you create any contacts in Central, they get pushed over to CCH iFirm. It allows you to still have a single source of truth from CCH Central, uh, but we'll also be putting in later, uh, later next year some user, um, or some UI, so you can manage your contacts, not just through Central, but you can start doing it in CCH iFirm as well going forward. Our anti-money laundering product um, for data checks and biometric um, KYC has already been launched and it's in market, and Ben will be talking, talking through this and showing some information and some screen recordings on this. Um, and then beyond that, we'll be launching ongoing monitoring later this year as well, where it'll do daily PEP sanctions monitoring and provide some proactive alerts. We're then looking to move into Know Your Business, or KYB, as it's known as, early next year. And this is going to help create summary company reports with information such as ultimate beneficial owners, registered companies, and PEPs and sanctions, and, and adverse media as well. Moving on to... Time and fees, this is our cloud time and fees product. Uh, that's going to be the equivalent of our on-premise. This will be in beta later this year. So it's currently being built, and then uh, we'll then move into a beta phase, so customers will be able to par um, partake in that, give us some feedback, and we're looking to have this launched as a soft launch and commercial launch early next year. And then finally, document management as well. Um, so cloud document management is going to be something we're currently looking at, and our aim is to have a beta later next year. And this is, again, we're looking at reimagining um, document management itself. So we're looking at how we can integrate with Office 365 applications for the collection, creation, and editing of documentation and communication. So um, there'll be some more news on that as we get closer to them dates. And then finally, I just want to talk through client onboarding. This is an area that we didn't really have in our portfolio and we want to bring in. And this is going to help streamline and help you um, um, bring more clients on quicker and speed up that time to onboard clients. So with that, we'll be look, we're currently looking at letters of engagements and proposals. and We should have a beta of that early next year. So letters of engagement, will be, uh, you'll be able to use either your templates or our, or our templates to send letters to get them signed by customers through e-signature. Proposals will be a way of you being able to win new business by showing the value uh, that you offer, reducing scope creep and clarity on the services that you're going to offer and your customers are going to receive. 
So that that will be coming out first, and then after that, we'll move on to risk assessment, 648 professional clearance, and also automated client creation. So again, risk assessments is around firm wide risks and helping you identify what these are and mitigate any exposure to risks. The 648 will um, look at using HMRC APIs to initiate and track these requests and automate some steps. And then after you've got all this information through your onboarding, we're looking at how we can automatically create clients so you can convert contacts in drafts seamlessly without having to rekey any information. So that's our sort of plans. So by the end of next year, you should hopefully have like a whole client onboarding suite of products available. So beyond the roadmap itself, we also have a robust new product innovation sort of pipeline and methodology that we use here. So you, uh, we get a lot of feedback from things like custom advisory boards, sales analysis, market analysis, having um, lots of um, kind of events that we listen to customers on. And from that, we move from the ideation stage all the way through to the end of launch and scale. So you, you'll have seen some of these items already on the roadmap. So CCH iFirm AML has been something that's been launched, but that started off as an ideation in the ideation phase and gone through this funnel. In the incubation development, you'll, have, you'll see a lot of our compliance products, validate in there, timing fees in there. And there's other things that we're currently looking at as well. So we've got things around workflow, dashboards, reporting, and some Gen AI sort of functionality as well that we're either ideating on um, validating with customers or doing some sort of experiments through prototypes and various other things. So some of these things um, will either come onto a roadmap or if we find that there's not a need or something needs to be tweaked, we can we kind of drop them off. But that's our sort of pipeline that you see. And then before I pass on to our colleagues to do some demos, I just want to talk through our in artificial intelligence strategy. So we, this is something that we are focused on. So we want to make sure that our AI... Um, serves a purpose and it's um, human centric so it's, it needs to be professional and it needs to enhance your relationship with your clients so we need to give you trust that the AI that we're using is kind of uh, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give the results as that, that you're used to from our software so that's why trust and transparency is very key for us and the whole purpose is to drive better outcomes for you so we're not just going to put AI in there uh, for AI's sake it's going to help solve customer challenges that you currently have to help streamline processes and things like that so that's what we're looking to do. And in terms of where we're at, uh, we are a global company. So we've got a number of uh, AI test cases going on. We've got 25 use cases that are currently being tested and validated globally. In the US, there's been a few prototypes that have gone out uh, with Microsoft Copilot as well, with CCH Access and Answer Connect, where it uses Gen AI Copilot technology to uh, interact and get answers and to do next actions. And we've got a few pilots that we're looking to run. So there'll be some pilots coming soon. So if you want to be part, uh, partaking in any of them sort of things, there'll be an opportunity as well coming up. So that's enough for me now. And I'm going to pass on to Ben, who's going to be taking you through anti-money laundering, I believe. Hi, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Um, I'd like to take you through our CCHI firm AML software. Um, CCHI firm AML is the first product that's launched in the uh, CCHI firm range of products, um, and it was born out of a need to simplify the AML process for firms who are using CCH. So I'm going to share my screen, and hopefully you'll be able to see. And I click share. And you should be able to see CCH Central. Can everybody see that? I'll take your silence as a yes. Yeah, we can. Then. Thank you, Bill. Um, so CCH Central um, shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. This is your single source of truth. It's your data hub. It's where all your contacts and all your clients are. And when we start the AML journey, um, we're always going to start it from Central for those who continue to use CCH Central. So you can see here, I've got my client details. This is myself. I've got my name, date of birth, address, and a few other bits and pieces. And I'm going to click onto the CCHI firm AML button at the top, which is in the task menu. And it's going to log me into CCHI firm. Now, one of the things that it does to do this is use the Walters Clear account. So once you've logged into iFirm once with your Walters Clear account, it will remember that across all of the different um, sessions that you have. If you're jumping out personal tax, accounts production, time and fees, validate, iFirm AML, anything else like that. So you can see here, 
I'm greeted to um, a menu which asks me what kind of check that I want to do. We have our AML and biometric KYC checks, which I'll talk about very shortly. But the one that I want to show you here is the AML data check. So we hit proceed. Again, it's pulled through all of my information from CCH Central, so there's no rekeying of data. I've not got different systems. I'm not uh, making typos and I'm crossing it over from system to system. And I can run our AML check. And what this is going to do, it's going to go off, it's going to verify our name, address, and date of birth with some of the big credit houses, with uh, government agencies, uh, and some other areas where it can verify that information for us. It's going to do PEPs, it's going to do sanctions, um, it's going to do adverse media, and it's going to do mortality as well. Um, if for any reason I fail my PEPs or sanctions check, you can see I've not, it's come through as a pass. I have the option to also pull a further report. Uh, and that report will detail exactly all of my PEPs and sanctions um, issues that have been flagged. But I can download that report. You can see there's nothing major for me to worry about here. I've um, got a lot of ticks, so we've been able to manage uh, and match that data. Anything that's not present, um, it's obviously not matched because it can't check it against there. And we do two plus two matching. So we go two negative data sets and two positive data sets, which means we want our name and address and date of birth verified, at least two of those. And we don't want to appear on any adverse media, any PEPs or sanctions, any mortality, and we've not. There are negative data sets. And that gives us an overall pass. If you are using CCH Central, um, what you'll also see as well is our AML tab. And in our AML tab, you've got all the different documents. These are automatically synced. And again, if you're a CCH document management user, it will also sync against the user in CCH uh, document management as well, meaning that you've not got to, again, download those reports, upload them, uh, keep them for you know, X amount of time on a hard drive or print them off. You've got that nice clean audit trail, which means that you can always show when a check was submitted, what check type it was, the status, the employee. You can see we've been doing a lot of testing as we build this out. Um, and then obviously the, the document name on top of that as well. Uh, we've also got the smart reporting fields and the reporting field. So all of these are in our CCH reporting products, meaning that you can go in and you can start running reports on uh, AML compliance, who's not had checks, what kinds of checks were done, you know, who's failed checks, and so on and so forth. But if I go back to my main tab here, and I just open up my tasks again, I'm going to show you our AML plus biometric KYC checks. So these are um, quite advanced in the functionality that they use. Um, what happens is that your client is going to get a text message. And again, this can be your client, it can be a draft client, it can be a contact. And uh, that text message is gonna come from your firm and it's gonna take them on a journey. So you can see again, it's pulled through my name and it's pulled through my mobile phone number and I can send that text message. What I wanna do is I'm just gonna pull up a, a video of what that journey looks like for your customers. So you can see here, I've got a text message. This is from Walters Kluwer. Again, it could be from anybody. Um, we also have the Walters Kluwer branding and depending on where you want to come on board with us on this, um, we can obviously brand that up with your colors um, and your um, logo as well. Lots of GDPR information, so obviously we're processing this personal information um, and we have to uh, make sure that all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. And we pop in our address. So I've just started typing my postcode. I can start typing um, the first line of my address. So it'll basically filter it down for us. And it's going to have access to my camera. And it's going to ask for a photograph of my ID. So I'm using my driver's license here. I could use my passport. I think there are 1,600 different IDs that this supports globally. So we've had colleagues with Indian driving licenses and Polish passports um, using this as well. So what it's going to do now is it's going to take all of that data using OCR technology, which is optical, optical character recognition, pardon me, put my teeth back in. Um, and it's going to pull all that information out for us. So it means that our clients aren't retyping that information. Uh, you can see it's pulled it all out. And now it's going to take a selfie as well. I've had a haircut since I did this. 
And it's really important that it asks you to smile when you do that selfie. And the whole reason that it's asking you to smile is so that you can uh, prove that this is actually a real person. Um, it's a real um, check that's taking place and they're not taking a photograph of somebody else. So in that instance, I'll just um, swap back. In that instance, what we're currently doing is we are doing the PEPs, sanctions, adverse media, mortality. We are also doing the um, uh, date of birth verification, name verification, address verification. That's all coming through as well. We're verifying that the person who's actually using that uh, application, so they're taking that photo, is the same person um, on the actual ID. So we have about 30,000 different facial vectors that we take into consideration and it matches them up to make sure that they are the right person. And it also detects that ID for any um, hallmarks of fraud or anything else that um, may be a little bit untoward. So obviously we can tell when we've got a real passport or a, a real driving license. So just to give you an idea, we get again a report that's come through here. So I get a copy of my ID. We get a selfie, which we match against the photo. We can see that we've got a breakdown of um, facial matching and liveness. So it goes basically across the whole face. And again, everything else uh, in terms of name, address, date of birth verified, adverse media, mortality, peps and sanctions. And we also get our tampering checks, which is low risk and an overall pass. So that's really, really good as well when it comes to actually onboarding that client, because again, that document is gonna sync automatically with CCH Central. And again, if you've got our document center, it goes straight into the document center there. It means that you don't have to go back and forth um, processing IDs, sending scans of driving licenses and passports. And it also means you don't have to get that proof of address as well. So they're just the first two checks that we've done. Obviously, one is run by the accountant. Our data checks that we saw first, they take about anywhere from 15 to 30 seconds. Uh, if you've got that data in CCA Central. And then, of course, the biometric checks give you a little bit more but the onus is on the uh, client to actually provide you with that information as well. And as well as fulfilling your AML obligations, it really does help with that client onboarding. One of the things that we're also implementing is now these fields for driving license and passport. Once you do a biometric check, and this will be in our 24.2 release, which is coming up, um, the driving license number and expiry date or the passport number and expiry date will then automatically populate into these fields as well. So anywhere we can try and automate any of this work, take away those manual steps, uh, that's exactly what we're doing. So I'll very quickly just run you through um, the feedback that we got. So the CCH customers um, absolutely loving CCH IFM AML at the moment, which is great news. Ease of running a check, 6.6 .6 out of 7. Uh, time to run a check. Average, it was about 30 seconds. You've already got that data. Sometimes you needed to rekey or make sure that data was in central. 90% uh, of firms found CCHI firm AML more efficient than the current setup, and that was in the beta period. So, you know, before we'd implemented any of the feedback, like the document sync or anything like that. Our roadmap, which I'll get onto very shortly, 5.6 out of 7, we've got a very robust roadmap to help keep building out AML functionality. Um, and 95 percent of our customers are intending to charge their clients for AML and they're going to generate new revenues. And again, a piece that we're looking at doing is to automatically create a disbursement um, when you run an AML check. We won an award, which is very exciting. Um, we won the Innovative Accounting Technology Award for CCHI firm AML at the UK Business Awards. And again, um, it just proves it with obviously the customer feedback that we've got and the great take up that we've had on CCHI firm AML from our existing base. In terms of the roadmap, so I think Mo touched on this at the very start, but ongoing monitoring is being delivered at the end of Q3, which is daily PEPs and sanctions uh, checks against your client base. Um, then we're going to move on to KYB. So we'll start looking into the business side of things. We'll have individuals pretty well covered at that point. So um, pulling down all the UBOs and the business structures for a uh, particular business. I want to increase our global coverage. So like I said, we do do 1,600, no, 16,000, pardon me, uh, global IDs. I also want to look at some of our data matching for things like address uh, and name and date of birth in foreign countries. As you can imagine, not everyone has kind of great, easily accessible data sets um, in other countries as the UK does. And then anything else that you'd like to see as well. Um, obviously, as Mo said, we always change our roadmaps based on customer feedback. Um, so anything that you think that we're missing that you'd like to see, please do let us know. 
Um, I do believe we'll have time for questions at the end, um, but if anyone does have any questions, you can pop them in the chat um, in case we're out of time. And my email address is on the screen there as well. So please feel free to drop me an email, uh, benjamin.cunliffe at walterscluer.com. Uh, that was a whistle-stop tour of our CCHI firm AML product. Um, if anyone has any questions, like I said, my details are there. Otherwise, I'll pass on. And I believe it is Mark, I think, next, um, who's going to take us through CCHI firm Validate. It is indeed. Morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Perdue. I'm one of the managers on um, on the product management team. If I just quickly share my screen. Okay. So hopefully on the screen now you can see CCHI firm Validate. Um, very much in the same way that Ben's just shown you the journey starting in Central um, to, for the AML uh, product, um, Validate is the same. So you would start off life in Central, and when you want to use Validate from within that client, you'd click the button and it would take you into Validate. So what Validate is, um, we've designed it primarily as a bank confirmation tool um, if you are performing audits. Um, the data it can access is the data that's available via open banking. So transactions, balances, uh, list of bank accounts, that type of data. So it may not be yet comprehensive enough for some of your more complex audits, but if you've got some simple audits, where we want to do is validate a bank balance or receive the transaction for a period, um, then validate can certainly do that. Um, so as I mentioned, we use open banking as the source of the technology for gaining the data. Um, it's also worth mentioning we use blockchain to store the data. So there, there is, you know, a, a sort of as secure as it gets really when it comes to data management. Um, so any data we receive via open banking is all stored in blockchain. The process is very similar to any other uh, bank confirmation tool. You prepare a confirmation. It goes to the client for them to log into open banking and approve it. Um, where our solution differs is at that point, rather than it coming back to you for you to then forward onto the bank, um, it goes via open banking, the request goes straight to the bank and then the data comes back into Validate. So if I, for now, if I just run through how you would create a test. So I've, I've called this just test one, just because I'm running a test. So we're within a client and I want to run a, a bank confirmation. Um, at the moment, I have to type in the email address, but um, it, as we do for other products, we'll be picking that up from central. So where the client has only got one email address, we'll pre-populate it here. Then in the next screen, that's where you would pick the bank that you want to do a request through. So in simple terms, it's it's any UK bank that, that shares data via open banking, which is pretty much all of them. Um, you can see we've got quite a comprehensive list here. But now being as I'm playing in a test environment, the bank is called Mock. So I'm preparing a confirmation request that's going to go via the client and end up at Mock Bank. So at this stage, I can now decide what type of data I want to receive. So I'm going to say I want to receive balance for all accounts and I want to receive that at the 31st of December 2023. I can add multiple requests all within this same um, th this same confirmation. And again, I have to paste in the email address at the moment, but that will be pre-populated. So the main three types that you can get is balance for all accounts, which I've already selected, details for all accounts, and transactions for all accounts. If you want to, if you've got a specific account, you can just ask for an account balance and then it will ask for the account number. Similarly, uh, transactions for an account, account transactions. But typically when I go through this, I ask for all of it. So at this stage, you don't actually need to know the bank accounts that the client's got. You just um, need to know that there's data that you want to request. So in this request, I've decided I just want a month's worth of transactions, which is the month up to the end of the accounting period. You're not restricted by the accounting period. You can do the entire period. You can span beyond the period. The only restriction here is the data that the bank hold. Typically, that's two years worth of data. Um, a lot of banks do hold three or four years worth of data. And then when I click send request, what's happening in the background is an email is being prepared to be sent to the client. And in good old Blue Peter fashion, Here's one I prepared earlier. Um, Yop Mail, just so you're aware, is sort of a disposable email account, which is very quick and easy for testing. However, they do kind of muck around a bit with formatting. So please don't judge the product based on um, what you can see here. So if I click on validate and approve. So what happens next is this is the screen that the client would see. It tells them obviously their name, their email address, 
It gives your details here as well. And it also starts to list what bank and what details you're requesting. They click approve with TrueLayer. And we get handed over. So TrueLayer is the open banking provider that we use for this data. Um, so at this point, this is no longer Walters Clear, and this is now TrueLayer. So the next screens are very much dependent on what bank has been selected. So if it was Barclays, it would, <clears throat> excuse me, it would be the Barclays open banking login screen. If it was Nationwide, Lloyd's, HSBC, etc. So I'm going to see a very simple screen, which is for Mock Bank, just so we can step through. Um, so if I log in, so I'm logging in as the client, I'm going through the bank's two-factor authentication, which for Mock Bank is very, very straightforward, as in I'm now approved. Then once the client has been through that process and approved it, then we hand back to validate and we've got that approved tick. And so validate is now making that request in the background um, to the to the bank. So if I go back over here, ignore that error. Go back over here again in good blue beta fashion. Here's one I prepared earlier. If it loads, there we go. Okay, so it's those same three requests within the within um, the confirmation, but the, you'll see these are now links that I can click on. So details for all accounts gives me um, details for all accounts. This is product is being betaed at the moment, so it's not ready for release yet, but we are going through beta at the moment. Hence why it might be slightly slow and mildly unpredictable at times. There we go. OK, so this is the details. So without knowing what accounts this client had at Mock Bank, I've got back a list of all the accounts they hold, the balance as at today's date and a little bit of information on the type of uh, the type of account it might be. Um, I can also look at balance for accounts at a given date. So here's historically. This is the balance for all those accounts at the accounting period end that I chose. So, again, I've got, you know, the type of account and the balance at that date. And then finally, I've got transaction reports. So for each one of those accounts, I've got a CSV file which lists all the transactions for that given account. So if I quickly open one up, it's a CSV file, um, so it's not hugely exciting to look at, to be honest. Um, it's got a few redundant columns in there at the moment that we're tidying up before we release it. But you can see what I basically get. If I just highlight everything and do that, I get a unique ID for a transaction. I get the amount. I get the account number. I get whether it's a credit debit, a description of the account of the of the of the transaction and the date of the transaction. So primary use case for this, as I say, is, is uh, doing a bank confirmation. So you could have an entire year's worth of transactions here that you can then use for your audit to do some testing. Um, interestingly, an, another use case that came up as part of the beta is starting to think about MTD um, for your small sole trader clients who maybe aren't yet doing the full bookkeeping that they need to. Um, this would be a way for you to get quarterly transactions into your business so that you could then um, help them prepare their quarterly submissions. So that's another potential use case we're going to explore in the future. But that is the product that I wanted to show you today. Um, so as Ben said, any questions, please add them to the chat and we will deal with those at the end. Um, otherwise, I believe I'm handing over to Dorcas. Me, I think. <laughs> Apologies, Jeremy, I'm handing over to. Um, can you see my screen? Hopefully. No. Um, if you find it, no. Oh, okay, no. I haven't shared the screen yet. Sorry, I've got a I thumbs up. Me, I've just, I've just no, 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 it. that's fine. If you're having trouble seeing the um, the, the screen because it's a bit scrunched up, click on the view in the top right, and then say full screen. Um, so let me share my screen now. There we go. So I'm showing accounts production. Um, which I'm hoping everyone can see. This is the on-premise. This is an on-premise client. Um, I'm going to begin by converting it into our cloud um, solution. So there's a button up here, which hopefully is visible, CTHI Firm Accounts Production. Uh, and I'm going to select Migrate to migrate that to the cloud. It outputs the data into a file, uploads the file 
into iFirm and takes us into iFirm where it says it's performing the migration, it's in progress, it's finished, and we click OK. So that's the data migrated into iFirm. And this is what you see when you first go into iFirm Accounts Production. Um, I'll run you quickly through the menu and then dive into a few areas in more detail uh, because I'm aware that we're overrunning. Um, the overview screen is, is just the overview screen, but it will have, it does have a rather nice feature at the bottom down here without and a balance sheet. And if you want to view and it will open up. There it is. So this is, um, is, is a new thing. It's, if you're creating a client from scratch in iFirm, put in things like the um, accounting period start and end date uh, and some other details like the country of incorporation. And then our assumption is that after that, you'll then be importing some data. Uh, so the import screen has been linked to the, the settings at import. Journals is what it says. It's just journal data entry, manual data entry. Trial balance and transactions are exactly what you would expect. Um, chart of accounts is what you'd expect. Officers, for us, this is a sole trader that we're looking at. So this is um, it's unincorporated as per Mark's um, presentation, but there are, sorry, um, Mo's presentation, but there are two types of unincorporated. This one is the simplest one, which is a, is a sole trader. So when you go off the screen, there's only actually one officer there who's the proprietor. Accounts disclosures is the... Um, what on-premise is called statutory database. So it's the information apart from what would appear on a trial balance that is needed to create a set of accounts. Um, then you get the set of accounts, the production of the accounts. And finally, uh, the, the data is ready for tax. So we have the figures that are ready to go across the tax. So the ordering, I think, is fairly logical. We'll look at some things as we um, go through this menu. Obviously, we're a bit tight on time. So I will skip straight to the trial balance as the first one. Here's our trial balance. I'm not going to compare it with on-prem, but it has converted properly. It's got both years in there, and you can see the years here on, on the drop-down as well. If you want to view or print it, uh, let's just view it. Print out looks similar. You can specify how many years you want to see. This one is current plus one. Uh, it goes up to five years for the trial balance. And there it is. So, so there's our trial balance report for two years. Other reports will have a similar layout to that with a, um, a print button, and then you can go in and select some options relating to the printout. Uh, chart of accounts, we support sub-accounts. We're not supporting divisions or other features that are more related to management accounting. So uh, you would enter in sub-accounts in, in the usual way by adding a nominal or sub-account. The other columns I think are familiar from on-prem, except that we split this screen between all nominals, profit and loss, balance sheet nominals. This ellipsis icon here lets you put in things like the profit and loss rounding account and so forth, which you have on-prem. The officers, I said there was only going to be one, and there she is. Nothing exciting about that. Accounts disclosures, uh, we've got a couple of new things in here. So let's say I want to edit a paragraph. So let's take the opinion paragraph. You literally just go in and you can start typing on the end um, extra. So you can put in some extra, uh, extra data in there. Um, These things in gray are formulae, uh, which you can click on to see what they are. But we're trying to discourage the use of formulae in general because we think they're a bit confusing to the end user. If you have modified a paragraph, you can see which ones you've modified by clicking the switch here. So we've modified the opinion paragraph. Uh, and some paragraphs uh, are, are obligatory, not so much on unincorporated. But for example, for a limited company, you might have to say the um, principal activities of the business are. So this one gives you just a list of those paragraphs that are mandatory so that you can make sure you filled them in. Moving on to the financial statements. Uh, we have the same layout that we have on premise. Um, over here, we can see we've got an error on the accountant's report. This is a bit new. It's got one. If we want to see what the accountant's report problem is, we can click on our list of validations, which is called errors and exceptions on-prem. And the accountant's report one is, the accountant's report has not been dated. Edit. So let's edit it. I'm going to put in today's date. Uh, 
and now that error message has disappeared and you could do the same for some of these others so the validation check is integrated into the um into the main accounts production area. The uh, the other options on here will be familiar. Green means it's going to print, uh, and you can force include or force exclude options using this ellipsis. To view the actual accounts, you click on print view, like we did with the trial balance, and I'll just view the full thing. And there it is. And it looks very similar to what's on premise because we've ported the underlying formats so that they uh, so that they appear in the cloud. That's those are the words extra changes that I put in. So even the font is exactly the same as on premise. Finally, um, if I go back, and we have the same collections that you would see on premise. Finally, if I go to the tax data, these are the figures that will flow through into um, personal tax. And I think that concludes my uh, rapid tour and over to Dorcas. Thanks, Jeremy. Hi, everyone. So I'm Dorcas, the product manager for personal tax, and I'll quickly run through CCH IFAM. Hopefully, everybody can see my screen. If not, shout. Brilliant. Um, Okay, so similar to all of the demos that you've seen for personal tax, we are again starting from central as our source of truth. Um, so I've got two clients here. Um, I'll go into the first one, which is a brand new client um, for this year where we haven't created a tax return, just to show you how we do that. Um, I'll start the creation of the 2024 um, tax year, and you can see that now. Um, excuse the formatting, we now give you an option to either create the tax return in um, CCH personal tax being central and in CCH IFAM personal tax. Um, just as a note, within IFAM we haven't built out any of the historic tax returns, um, so if you did want to create a historic tax return you won't have the option to um, create it in IFAM. So I'll create the 2024 tax return um, and you could roll forward um, this capability but at the moment that's currently being implemented so we will have this live in the software um, in early next month and as an interim solution we've also added in the capabilities to link um, your existing workflows if you use workflow within central um, to this client even if it is being created in IFAB. So what that's just telling me is that it's um, redirecting me to the cloud um, and it's loading up that client and that new tax return. So there's some errors around um, missing data that I need to add in as additional, but we've got our blank tax return. Some of the key differences, the obvious layout, um, and we've also changed how we add in schedules for clients just to simplify um, the experience. So instead of having a default list of all of your schedules, um, you, you add them in as you need them. So if this client had child benefits as an example, um, then I can add in that schedule and I can start my data preparation. I'll go into a client that I prepared earlier. And before I, I do that, actually, if I go back into Central, we can now see that I've got the 2024 um, tax return created um, and it's created in iPhone, so it tells me where I can access that return. So going back into iPhone, um, I've added in all of my appropriate schedules for this client. Um, it's a really basic sole trader client, so we've got um, UK property, um, if I, I can see here that the data input for that has been complete and finalised. Um, we've got self-employment, that needs um, some attention, so I'll quickly go into my self-employment just to see what's missing. We've got some data in here that I can see. Um, historically, I'm quite aware of this client and 
I can quickly see that from their wages, that's quite different from last year. So if I wanted to add in any disclosure notes um, around that, I can. I can add that in and we can now see that the disclosure notes have been added in. I'm happy with the information in there, so I'll finalise this and I will save and go back. And the status has now changed to finalised and I've also got an indication to let me know that there's disclosure notes. Um, for this client, they don't really have any taxable income even though I've added it in. Um, so I can just remove this schedule because it's no longer relevant. But what is relevant is that this client does have some interest from UK banks. Um, so if I wanted to add that in, I can add in interest. Um, from UK banks and then I can start to populate some of this data. What we are looking to introduce um, is adding in similar functionalities where we've got the account numbers and sort codes and banking information linked in so that you can select that information from a drop down um, for that client and it will self populate. Um, so that's going to be coming in the next quarter as well. So I'm happy with that. So I'll save that information as well. And I'll go back and I can see now that from my data entry, um, this has all been finalized and complete. And if I go into my tax calculation view, um, I can also see the summary version of that. I'm quite happy with that process um, and because just as an entry solution for the lack of us not having workflow, um, in I found that's also coming in the next quarter. I mentioned earlier we've got that link in, so I can just go back into Central, um, see where I am as part of that flow, and I can update my status to pass and refresh. Now that I'm happy with that, I can generate the IR mark. And if I wanted to, I can also run a test in live just to double check that um, all the information is correct um, before I submitted a tax return just so I've got guarantee that it will be successfully filed to HMRC. As this is a test, the test in live for this one's been rejected. Um, but let's just hypothetically say everything went smoothly and it was a success. And I now wanted to create the client documents um, to be able to send to the client for approval. Um, one of the feedbacks that we've got from, from the beta, we had it in our roadmap, but it's just accelerating it a little bit further, is the capabilities to have the tax bundle in its entirety. So things like the cover letter, the transmittal letter, um, and also the backing schedules. All three of those elements are going to be implemented in Q4, in Q3 um, as well, with workflow coming in in Q4. So now that that's done, um, I can load up my client documents so I can see the IR mark stamped um, within the view. And then if I scroll all the way down, I can see my disclosure notes that I've added in for self-employment and also my tax calculation right at the bottom. I can also download this. Um, and share that to the client and let's just say that that's been done and complete I can then go back into my workflow and mark that as complete as being sent to the client. When we do implement workflow um, one of the things that we are going to do um, in the cloud because again once you're in the cloud, the feedback that we've got is they want to be able to perform all their actions rather than um, jumping back and forth between Central and iFirm. It's not really a, a great user experience. Um, but what we will be doing with the workflow once it's implemented is linking um, the tasks back into Central automatically for reporting purposes. So just removing that manual need for you as a user to go in and manually update the workflow in Central. So that's the end to end demo. I won't be filing um, the tax return um, in this instance. Um, so if there aren't any questions 
in the chat and just having a quick look. I'll hand it back to you, Mo. Hi, thank you, Dorcas. So thank you very much. Um, and hope, hopefully you found that useful to kind of go through. Just to run through some of the questions that have come through, I'll just do a quick run through um, that, have, that have been coming. So there was a question around uh, validate. Can you add more than one authorizer? Uh, I.e. many companies require two authorizers per bank mandate. So Mark has answered you can add multiple authorizers. However, open banking only usually requires one authorizer to share read only access. Um, so if one company does have more than one authorizer, then the one confirmation process can be used to send different emails to each of the directors so they authorize their parts only, which is good. And there was another question, is it the intention that request for security details in relation to bank accounts held will be added? For now, the um, focus is on the open banking process. When we have document collaboration within iFirm, which is what a typical conf confirmation letter would need, then yes, this is something we're going to explore further. So there was some of the questions. Also in the chat, we had a question around, can Validate give details of security as on normal bank letters? Uh, and Mark said, no, not currently in scope. Um, open, um, the current scope is open banking, and that is not available to us. When we have document collaboration, we'll have a bit more information there. There were some questions about migration, because um, you saw the process from accounts production of taking a client from on-premise to cloud. And for now, at launch, it will be client by client. However, we are working on putting that functionality in where you can do by client or do bulk. Uh, and it'll be, so, it'll be your sort of choice how you want to work. But I guess by doing it client by client, it makes that transition, that change a bit easier because you're just moving one, one client across and then, you know, the data's come through correctly and you can start working on them. But this is something that we will have, like, bulk migration going forward as well. There was also a question around will... I, CCHI from replace desktop versions. Um, so as you can see from our um, roadmaps, we've got functionality coming more and more into CCHI firms. So it's going to be growing rapidly. It's going to get to a point where you're going to see more new innovation in the cloud version than the on-premise. So that might be a point where you kind of feel like you want to transition to the cloud and it's the right time for you. But currently there's no sort of plans to end of life on-premise. It's still going on. Uh, we, we still update the compliance in there and any sort of kind of functionality and features that come in um, that are kind of essential we, we are putting in. And finally, there was also a question around um, anti-money laundering. The data checks for, um, seems to be pulled from the main tab. For companies, we would typically complete AML checks on the individual directors who are including as contacts under the associated tab. Can you run from contacts? So Ben's thought, yes, you can run AML checks for any individual, regardless of if they're a cust uh, if they're a client or a contact. So that is possible as well. Okay. I can't see any more questions. If anybody's got any more questions, I'll leave this open for another minute or so. Otherwise, thank you very much for coming and hope to see you again soon.